this is Dimensions of the Supernatural. I'm Maureen Grzynski, otherwise known as a little witchy, and I'm here with my great co-host, Anthony Simonelli, otherwise known as... Hey, Mr. Forget About it. How you doing tonight? How is everyone? Hi, Zach. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Ron. Uh, we have a couple other people here, and we'll probably be seeing more people coming in. We have some fantastic guests, as always. We have Scott Porter and Stephanie Burke who we love very much. They will be coming in in just a few moments. We're having some technical difficulties. Here comes, oh. yeah, okay, somebody just popped in. Hey. Sorry about that. Hey, <laughs> hey brother. <laughs> Man, hold on, let me see if I can get some more volume here where I can hear you. How you doing? I'm not bad, I'm sweating like crazy right now. I had my, my earbud in my ear. And I had to do something. I jumped up. And when I did, I pulled everything off my desk. <laughs> like microphone, Yeti goes flying, iPad goes, everything went flying. So I was like, oh my gosh. That is never a good start. <laughs> All right, let me see. I need to be in horizontal view, don't I? Let me see. If that. We'll just do the show sideways. <laughs> is that better? Yeah, great. Good. Okay. That's good. Good. Um, let me check on Steph. She we were we were talking through some stuff and in some deep conversation. And uh, she said, Oh my God, we have to do this show in 30 minutes. And I said, You're lying, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so we were both in a mad day. We've got we've been we had to reschedule a bunch of stuff. So everything's kind of off. So I I am so sorry. You know, no, you're good. We're finally glad that you, you actually make it here. Yeah. Hey, listen, I am too. I'm trying to figure out why I'm having trouble hearing you guys. It's like really, really quiet. Let's see if it's I'm my microphone. Quite a person. <laughs> Something could have gotten trashed when I. Uh... Oh my God, I put too much lemon in my water. I'm kind of choked. <laughs> <laughs> hey. If Steph was here, she would be like Mercury's in retrograde, so everything. Oh, it's been so weird. Oh my god, yeah. it's, it's very been weird. Horrible. I'm trying to find oh, out. There Let's she see. is. Oh, there we go. Comes, I have, she comes. I, I found my volume. Where is she? Okay. Oh my God, we were hey, talking Steph. about you. I, <laughs> I put too much lemon juice in my water. I was like, I'm going to choke to that. <laughs> she's going to tell you it's Mercury in retrograde. I said, it's been so weird. <laughs> well, it's also eclipse season, so that's part of the problem. Yeah. That's it. We'll just blame yeah. it on the aliens. Like, I just went to turn on my <laughs> ring light. I got nothing. Oh, I, that same here. What the heck? Look. It's <laughs> dead. It's dead. I just tried to. Turn Wait, it do you have on. the same one that I do? Yeah, we have the same exact one. We bought them same time. It, it it's gone. It's done. And it so won't turn we, on. We just oh, had wow. like an earthquake on the east coast, <laughs> and I mean, you guys, I don't know if you felt it or not, but <coughs> oh I yeah, the one, it. No. the one in New York. Yeah, no, that was the wild, wild. <laughs> my first, my first earthquake. First earthquake. Yeah, it was my wife and I sitting on the couch, and the couch starts moving, and you know, being a paranormal investigator, my wife. Because our dog just passed, and she's going, "Is Daisy behind the couch?" She's Daisy, <laughs> yeah. it's the dog, and the couch is, is is actually going like this. I'm like, "What the hell?" The TV was going. I mean, yeah. and nothing really happened, but it was like a crazy moment. But right away, we thought it was something moving the couch. You know? Yeah, you were uh, you were, you were like, it's, "It's it's Daisy Soros," because you know she's come back as a dinosaur and moving. Yeah, the yeah. Couch. she was a miniature yeah. doll child. <laughs> <laughs> My wife gets moving the couch. I said, I don't think it's Daisy. No, I don't that big. I'd be a little nervous. True. <laughs> it could move I, me and my wife on the couch. I'm still not centered up. It's like my camera's looking up at me. I don't know. Oh, I'm at moving. this point, I have no idea. I don't have a ring light. I got no lighting. I have a pinched nerve, so I can't move that fast, guys. Aww. Sorry. So yeah. I'm, 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 this is. Well, we'll make up for this it. This is what with, we got. With, 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 <laughs> You're here. That's all that. Yeah, that's oh, all I've been trying to get you guys with us for what? <laughs> <laughs> it's been forever. Well, yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. A... Now I had to reschedule on you, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Because we both we both come down with like some type of plague. I'm talking like it was horrible, horrible chest and 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 trachea and everything was just all irritated <laughs> and 
Like I could walk up a flight of stairs and couldn't breathe, and we all tested, yeah. you know, tested negative for COVID. So we have no clue what it was. It's been crazy here too. Everybody had <laughs> COVID, then the virus that like the stomach thing, and now I don't know what's going on with me. I think it's like how Steph said, like the retrograde <coughs> with the with the eclipse and the whatever. I'm just like I can't see out of one eye. My head's spinning. I have a terrible yeah. headache. Everything. It's just weird. <clears throat> A little bit of everything going on. Yeah. Let me see. Trying what to get this How is everyone? <laughs> Let me turn this way. Maybe this will work better. You guys got to see the eclipse? Quite yeah, that's more just that way. <clears throat> you got to, uh, see we did not. No, it was no. cloudy. It, it, it was very cloudy. Yeah, it, it was. It was <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I've seen them years ago, but where we were. it's pretty cool. Yeah, then it got cloudy and, you know, it was like halfway through and it got cloudy over here, so you couldn't see the full effect. But it got dark. So yeah, it got dark. dark. <coughs> so that was interesting. We just saw clouds. Did, did anything weird happen while you were in the eclipse? Did Everything always happens weird here. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in New York. <laughs> Everything weird saying? happens there. <laughs> I'm yeah. in New York. <laughs> How about you guys? Well, lead, leading up to it, we had earthquakes and plagues. <laughs> yeah. It's like leading yeah. up to it. Yeah, we had the earthquake and a bridge collapsing not too far. You know, yeah. a lot of, all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, that's yeah. right. <clears throat> yeah. And then there was oh, another one. The <laughs> there was a boat that uh, the lights went out in Philly, but it didn't hit the bridge. And then there was another one I heard in Oklahoma. Mm. That's right. Yeah, there was one that hit a bridge out there somewhere, wasn't it? Yep. I think it hit the bridge in Oklahoma, but the one in <clears> Philly <throat> didn't happen. Yeah. Well, the the one in I think it was Maryland where the um, other one hit. Baltimore. Yeah. yeah, that was tragic. Yeah. 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 That was. <laughs> so, nice. The weather is affecting everything. The the zodiacs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know everything. Everything is affecting that stuff. <clears throat> Everything, exactly. everything's a mess, and there's lime in the plant is coming and everything. So yeah, we got a lot of things had it this way. It's just, it's just gonna get crazier. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the ast astrological stuff happens every year. People just don't realize it. <clears throat> but or they don't believe it. Well, that too. Right. Sometimes it's just a perfect storm of things that happen at once that really inconvenience people. But it really depends on the planet and uh, constellation placements in your own personal charts that's why it's different for everybody so yeah. <clears throat> well the Don't craziest mark. thing for me is i'm gonna be a grandfather in a couple of weeks so well that's what? exciting hey yeah. congratulations <coughs> thank you having a I must boy have, i must have missed that one yes i is. Oh, well, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm on social media and I look and, and just, but I just, I glaze through and then I find a recipe that I want to try and cook. Hey, whatever it is. So, my, my brother, Gerard, I, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. yeah. His birthday today. He's just, oh, awesome. He, they took him out for dinner. So he's going to try to pop in a couple minutes and say hello, awesome. you know, on the, the, well, if not, please tell him we said happy birthday. Yes. Yeah. Well. Happy birthday, Joe, <clears throat> when, when you watch the show. How about that? <laughs> yeah. When he comes out, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah for sure. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They took him out to dinner tonight, so I'm here with you guys. Sweet. I'm missing a, bar a barbecue dinner. Oh. You could have gone. <laughs> I told him that. We're not that exciting. No. Nah. I mean, I'm here with you guys. guys. I mean, it, we're not exciting except for when I, you know, I stand up with my uh, earbud, my ear, pull my Yeti, and my iPad on the floor. <laughs> Everything's a mess. I wish I actually saw that. That must have been interesting to see. If if it would have been live, you'd have been like, "Holy cow, what's going on over the earthquake?" <laughs> it's another earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> earthquake, Daddy, what's going on? Yeah. <clears throat> oh my god. So, so what have you guys been up to lately? I mean, we just saw, you know, the uh, Ghost Asylum, which is what we were waiting to have end before we could see you again well secrets of the asylum secrets of the asylum i'm sorry secrets, secrets of the asylum. Of the <laughs> I, I have paper in front of me and i can't see i lost my vision in my left eye and i really yeah, yeah secrets, I secrets. To oh, I no. took notes. <laughs> <laughs> i love it oh my god i love yes. it secrets of the asylum 
That, that I mean, I haven't seen the show yet. It, it came what? out. That's really cool. I'm sorry. You have to watch it. Yeah. yeah. What's it? What's, yeah. what's on travel or is it's on, on Fox it? Nation. Yes. It's a great Fox Nation. Show. Now, if you are <clears throat> law enforcement, EMS, um, military, former military, uh, you sign up, you get a year for free. Uh, oh, really? So they take care of our first responders and military, yeah. uh, but you can get on there and sign up. You get a, you know, I think it's still you get a week free, uh, so you can jump in and watch it. They've got yeah. some other cool content on there, but yeah, I mean it's it was an adventure and it was one that we got to do the way that we wanted to, right. which is exactly. which is even better. Uh, mm -hmm. So the the uh, the investigation, the research, how we approached it, everything was done the way we wanted and thought that it should be done. Mm -hmm. uh, so I felt like it turned out really well. That's that's awesome because you don't usually get the option when you're doing <coughs> the only somebody trying to tell you and point to you and tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. so when you get a chance to do it yourself and you know it's done right. Yes. Yeah. You know, yep. Mark on it. That's awesome. Yeah, that was the that was the big deal thing there when we when we got to do it. We wanted to do it our way, and and the best part about the show is it wasn't like we were there for just a little bit of time and then took off down the road. We we got to spend how long were we there, babe? Like six weeks or something yeah. like that. Wow. Um, so we got to totally immerse ourselves into <clears throat> the location that was there. Um, so that was, you know, that was very helpful for the investigation and very helpful for us to, to really create relationships with the energy that was there. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, doing the investigation for that long, it's, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And, you know, you get to, you get to, you get to approach it from a different level and dig in a whole lot deeper. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you get to do it your way. That's yeah. The, that's the, that's the thing. thing. That's the thing, yeah. So, but it, what you saw, what you saw on the show. Um, well, he didn't see it. I didn't see it yet. That's right, you didn't. I see got it. to see it. No, I got. To see well, I've now, seen everything see else that. you've been in. So <clears throat> now, I'm now, sorry. I, the, only thing I, I'm sorry. <laughs> the one you, the one you missed out is the greatest. Yeah. Um, the, um, you know, it, it makes me not even want to tell you about it now because you've got to go watch it. It's like yeah. you're, you're, you're really <clears throat> missing out. <laughs> but I promise I will watch it. I mean, if you want to talk about it, there might be people in the audience that they'd see it. Oh, absolutely. We'll, right well if, they, if okay. they have any questions about it, we can definitely answer them, but we don't want to spoil it for you guys okay. if either um, of you have seen it yet. <clears throat> but there's some, I mean, like, you have to you have to look at it like with the way we approached this was we went in and we didn't go in with a preconceived notion. Mm -hmm. We went in with a blank slate. Uh, we kind of knew where we were going, but um, we didn't research it in depth. Steph didn't no. research it all. You uh, you knew where we were going. You got to know everything. I did. I just showed up. I did. You just showed up. <clears throat> um, but, um, you know, going in like that is, it, it kind of gives you that blank slate to start with. Yeah. So, you know, we knew a little, you know, I knew a little bit. Staff didn't know anything except for we're going to Detroit. We're going to investigate this place. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool to be able to see her interactions and how she worked with the energy there mm -hmm. and what those, those raw interactions brought us as far as evidence and mm -hmm. how we were able to dig into those particular interactions and find elements in history uh, that supported what we were experiencing. Um, so that was really cool. And then, yes. of course, once you see the show, you'll see where we dug into it and were actually able to rewrite a piece of the history that was there. Yeah. I, I mean, um, and the, the place, it's, it's a known place or it's a a new place. Yes. It's it's a known place. Yes. Are you about yeah. to tell us that without yeah. telling anything? Yeah. It, oh, yeah, yeah. I know we got investigators in the audience. It's People out like there. to go places. <laughs> yeah, it's, in New uh, York, out Pennsylvania, and everything, you know. So it's been public. Um it aired on Fox Nation. The commercials for actually were airing during the World Series and everything throughout the month of October. So it's it's been public since then. So we went to Eloise Asylum in Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um and we spent quite a 
quite a bit of time there trying to uncover the different layers of everything that happened there. Um, and it was a, it was a different experience for both of us being able to be there for as long as we were able to be there and mm -hmm. uh, to work together the way that we do. Mm -hmm. But well, you went there with a blank slate. <laughs> you had no idea what was going on. So nope. your ability is just, when you got there, it was opened up, I, I'm assuming. Yep. Yep. Um, they sent me in and the, I think the difference between what we were able to do compared to what we've been allowed to do in the past, um, mm -hmm. is our team didn't have a plan either. They just said, go in, read the place, tell us what you find out. And there was no script. There was no preconceived anything. It was mm -hmm. just whatever we find out tonight writes the next episode. Wow. And it went yeah. from, you know, that was the first step to everything that we found continued the story for us. There was nothing that, you know, they would be like, okay, now we have to do this or that. It was wherever we wanted to go and whatever the spirits told us is what wrote the next episode. Oh, wow. That's, That's what really I really cool. loved about this show. This is so different from anything else I've ever seen. Yeah. And, and you guys really, um, you, you know, you know what you're doing and you can just like fly by the seats of your pants and every episode was so different it was just like a breath of fresh air well thank you that's that's what we were well, looking for we were trying for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted it to be different we wanted it to be you know authentic and real you know, we wanted you know i've always said that i love to take people along with me on the investigation you know if it's if i'm doing a show i want people to experience what i experience and see what i see yep um you know and and all the years of doing television and doing paranormal shows you know, one of the big things that i had always had a problem with was every time that you would hear something that was live action um you know the audience couldn't hear it or they would put filler music in or something yeah. like that that would that would cover up that moment mm -hmm. and everybody's like, well, I couldn't hear it. Well, that's because they had to recreate it. Um, right. In in this show, you you won't hear those the music at those moments. You hear the evidence, so you get to hear what we hear down the hallway. You get yep. to hear what we hear <clears throat> in the room with us, and uh, that was that that turned out awesome. I was so happy and glad that we were able to do that and. Um, I mean, even like when you watch the show, the, the, the disembodied voice, that was probably one of the more uh, pivotal uh, pieces of evidence, you know, in the show that really sent us on a path of, of looking for really and truly it was a true crime that had been covered up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it sent us on that path, that was that was amazing. And, and I do have to say, though, that when when I was able to clean up that audio from from that disembodied voice, uh, that was that was really the only time that we had recreated a moment uh, on the show that wasn't live action because Steph and I were in the hotel room and I was going over <clears> the <throat> audio. She was in the shower and uh, I ran in the bathroom, yelled at her and told her she had to listen to this thing right away. And so uh, that couldn't be on TV. Uh, so we had, to, we had to recreate that with her, like combing her hair, brushing her teeth or something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> We're like she couldn't be in the shower for 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 a family show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I love how you guys work together, though. It's it's truly amazing. I mean, you you do know each other so well, which really helps. But mm -hmm. you're you're great working together as a team as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like to think so. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's it's good that you do. I mean, it's really helps. It does help. It's definitely a natural thing. There's no effort that's put into that. It's just how it's been since day one. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's wrong. Really I mean, you know, if we get if we're in a situation and we get aggravated with each other, it comes out. You know, it's just the way it is. You you can you can see some of it on the show, but you know, after being in a location like that for so long, you know, the location starts to weigh on you. Yeah. And and. Steph can really speak to that because it was <clears throat> it was one of those things that she first picked up on. And as we started seeing what was happening, it was like both of us had this light bulb come on. It was like, holy cow, this is this is this is this is what's happening. This is why we're not agreeing, because whatever what we were dealing with was trying to uh, confuse us, I guess you would say. Yeah. Yeah. Like trying to separate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jen Jenny says having the right partner is everything. You can read each other. Right, mm -hmm. Anthony? 
Yeah, Jenny's like usually my partner when we go because my wife doesn't go, her husband doesn't go. So when we go on investigations, we only two people like without their husband and wife and stuff. So we always end up together, and her and I like the same way. We can read each other, <clears throat> and it's it's really something how you know you can interact with somebody like that. You know? Yeah, you work with someone for so long, you know, it, it's it it makes it a cohesive yeah. type of relationship mm -hmm. where. You know, you kind of can anticipate how someone's <laughs> going to react or or what's going to happen, and you know, you you know what to look for when things are stressful or not quite right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's awesome. So the one question is, how did you get into the paranormal? So I don't know both is. <laughs> ah. you don't know. I, I, I was just born started. Into it. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you probably grew up uh, was... with the abilities. Uh, yeah, no, I was I was born with everything that I deal with now. Um, mm -hmm. It's run in my family for 10 generations that I know of. Um, on top of that, I was born into a very historical old home. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it was uh, <laughs> just a perfect storm for strange. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> by the time I was like three, or at least that's my first memories of um, asking, I used to ask my dad like, what are all these pictures? Cause he, he loved photography and um, they looked funny because they were infrared film. Um, and he's like, Oh, I'm just looking for ghosts. And that was my childhood. He wow. loved history. He was, um, you know, my grandparents owned a travel agency. He would travel the U S and he would just take pictures and tell me ghost stories from all of those times that he would travel. And I thought it was normal. The, the ghosts that were walking around here, I thought were just normal. Like everybody else got to do that. I didn't realize what death was until I lost my grandmother when I was seven. So it was, um, it was a natural thing, but I always tell people, you know, especially people that are, um, curious or getting into this or wondering about it is I wasn't given a choice. Most people choose to join the paranormal. Most people choose to go on a ghost hunt. Most people choose to make this their lifestyle. I didn't have that choice. Um, I'm grateful that I'm passionate about it and I'm grateful that I love it as much as I do, but there were times in my life that I did not at all. You know, sometimes you just want to be normal. I mean, what is normal anyways, but um, you really strive to just no. fit in, <laughs> you know, especially in high school, you just want to, you know, go to school, do your work, go home, yeah. not see everything and hear everything mm -hmm. and, um, it wasn't easy growing up that way, for sure. Yeah, I see. I read that you, you you did your genealogy and you go back to the Mayflower? The Mayflower and the Salem Witch Trials and many yeah. other uh, prominent figures in uh, wow. the beginning of America and revolution. Um, so it's there's a lot of cool history there. And it goes so deep. I mean, when you come over on the Mayflower, you only have X amount of choices to, you know, <laughs> marry and procreate with. <laughs> so... <Yeah. laughs> um, <clears throat> Pickings are kind of slim, so you end up being related to a bunch of people that end up in a history book. So it's um, I know I show Scott stuff all the time. You know, we both love history, we both love genealogy, so we're always sharing something back and forth. Like, hey, look who I'm related to this time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's um, that's something I've known since I was a kid. Yeah, I love uh, genealogy myself, and my wife goes, "Oh, well, how would you got looking up dead people in your past, and you go looking for dead people." <laughs> When you go to the I get a thing for dead people. That's all. Hey, <laughs> they don't bother me. Why people do? <laughs> true. True. I don't. I can't say the same. Yeah. <laughs> live people don't bother you. Huh? You say live people don't bother you? No, I'm just saying that the dead do too. So it's really yeah, a toss up. And I have a similarity with you stuff like. Um, I have several people that were, uh, that signed the declaration and the yep. constitution and, you know, it's, it's really weird to like, look back. I never really liked history that much until I started to find those things out. But then yep. while I, being a kid, I was seeing things in my house and I thought that was normal and, you know, light, light bulbs would shatter if I was mad or yeah. whatever. And I thought, they still oh, do. <laughs> Yeah, it just gets worse now. Yeah. <laughs> but I can control my anger a little bit more. It depends. But it depends on the situation. <laughs> so um, I don't think people realize that that's a thing. Like, yeah. 
you know. Well, they've never experienced it before. And I think that um, a lot of people want to experience that mm -hmm. until they realize um, what it entails mm -hmm. and like what goes into it. And it's, um, mm -hmm. it's hard. <clears throat> it's hard to already feel like you're different than everybody else. It's hard to feel like you don't fit in somewhere. Um, even just being the kid that likes ghosts is hard. You know, never mind. You can see them, you can hear them, you can communicate with them. Yeah. Sometimes just being the kid that likes spooky things or being the kid that likes history, it's already tough. So it's um, it's interesting. People will say to me all the time, like, oh, I want to be just like you. And I laugh because I'm like, are you sure about that? <laughs> um, you know, or like, I'd love to know what goes on in your head. And I'm like, I can tell you, but it's a bunch of scrambled craziness at times. Because um, there's, <clears throat> I always... You know, like those memes that you see, like I have like 25 tabs open and there's music playing somewhere and I have no idea where it's coming from. Like that's my brain all the time. Um, <laughs> Scott will tell you <laughs> the amount of randomness in a conversation with him at times is like, I think probably shocking for most people, but he's, he's a good sport. He puts up with it. Um, I just follow the squirrels. <clears throat> yeah. That's literally all you have to do. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like half of a thought here and then the next topic there and then back to the original topic and then maybe like three more different ones it's just um it's like uh psychic adhd that's it <clears throat> i'm added to my resume professional squirrel chaser yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay that's, that's uh, i mean it know. works yeah <laughs> yeah it's so, a lot it's a lot dealing with other people's energy and thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. and dead people and everything else all mixed into one um mm -hmm. but i always tell people i don't know what it's like to be normal like everybody else you know you have an idea of what it's like and if i were to teach somebody how to use your abilities you're still starting from you know like a foundation or you know here's your base and then you go to to the extreme of whatever mm -hmm. it is i can teach you where mine was already turned on when I was born, so I don't get to have the normal foundation. You can't. I don't know what it's like. Yeah, no. I, I, I know growing up, because I, I have my abilities also, mm -hmm. from early ages to I get older, you know, how people shut you out a lot of times, and they think you're crazy, they don't want to bother mm -hmm. with you, because you, you're doing all these things with, with ghosts and stuff like that. So I understand when growing up, I grew up as a kid in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah, so that was all out, you know, taboo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the so. '90s weren't easy. <laughs> yeah, '90s weren't easy. Neither. No, but when like 2000s when the show started, yeah, the it, show it started 2004, 2005. Yeah, that's when everybody's like, "Oh, that's cool, right?" Yeah, more what is that? K two and become investigators. Yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. It still happens. Yeah, oh yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> I see it out there, but it's interesting when people come to you and they start talking to you about what they're experiencing and you could just talk to them and they like they feel like they're taking something off their chest yeah because now they realize wow somebody <clears throat> else has experienced the same thing i have or there's other people out there just like me yeah 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 so, that's how i felt when it hit tv i was like hey somebody <laughs> does what i do somebody yeah. likes what i do you know it's mm -hmm. like one of the things that steph and i've done is you know we've gone and spoke to children, you know, uh, yep. I say children, you know, I'm talking, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old kids. And it's amazing to watch, watch them formulate their thoughts and questions as you're telling them what you do and how you do it, and, you know, and, and what, what's, what goes on. And they, it, it's a, they have some of the most thought provoking questions. <laughs> I would say probably more thought provoking than most adults that ask questions. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's amazing how kids think outside the box. Yes. And, and that goes back right with some of the stuff that Steph has talked about for years, how, you know, kids have their, their, their antenna mm -hmm. is open. Their vision is open. They can mm -hmm. see things, mm -hmm. sense things, feel things. And as mm -hmm. they grow, they kind of grow out of that if it's not nurtured. And, and it's amazing to listen to the questions because they're they're so in depth, so insightful, yes. and and really test us as quote unquote professional investigators or adult mm -hmm. investigators, you know, ever what term you would like to use, because you know in the field you're <clears throat> constantly learning, and it's amazing to see how these fresh new minds are looking at what we what we're doing with the book of knowledge that we've already created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's 
Yeah, the young kids. And also nowadays, the kids have access to computers. <clears throat> mm -hmm. they, they carry a computer in their hand. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a cell phone. So they got access to everything. So if they have a question, they can also type it in and or just see something on the show. You right. Know, that might help them out. So when they come to you <clears throat> and they see, you know I mean? And then, oh, and they, they, they start their, you know, it's interesting, like you said, some of the questions and how they feel that they're, because some of the parents, I know at the at, at the Paracons, the, the kids come up to you and start talking. And the parents are like, oh, yeah, it's like it's like the imaginary friend or something. Thing. And the kid talks, she goes, oh, there's something in my car, there's this, this, and this. And you, you talk to the kid and just try to make him feel that he's not crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, everybody tried to make us feel crazy because we did what we did. We spirit yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, <clears throat> I can remember growing up and and everyone said the ghosts weren't real. Yet everyone around me had a ghost <laughs> story. And I'm like, OK, so if you say ghosts aren't real, why do you have a ghost story? You know, right. it's 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 kind of contradicting yourself there. And, and I look, I see it like that now. But back then I was like, OK, all right. And I'm like, well, why don't I have a ghost story? Why, why don't I have something like this that's happened to me? And and I didn't have anything like that that I could, you know, put my finger on. Um, until I got in college and, and that was such a, 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 a phenomenal real life experience that, you know, it kind of triggered me, put on me, put me on this path of what, what is it we're dealing with? You know, cause I don't think my first, and I'll call it paranormal. I don't know that it was legitimately a ghost. I don't know mm -hmm. that it was, I don't know what it was. It looked like my mother. Um, you know, I've told the story, you know, hundreds of times, but <clears throat> I woke up, I was, I was back home at my parents' house from college and I woke up uh, in the morning and I could I got out of bed, I could smell breakfast. Um, I walked down the hall, I looked in the kitchen, I could see my mother standing there in a pink house coat cooking breakfast. I could hear the skillet sizzling, I could hear the exhaust fan running. Um, you know, I could see that she was wearing that pink house coat. I could smell those breakfast smells and hear the things going on. So I went to the restroom, got cleaned up. And when I come back out, there was no smell, no sound, no nothing. And, um, you know, and normally, like, if, if they were leaving to go somewhere on the farm or going somewhere else, they would leave me a plate in the microwave if I was home or in the oven or whatever. So I looked, and there was nothing there. Didn't even think about, you know, the stove wasn't hot or there was no dishes in the sink or everything was cleaned up so quickly. I just mm -hmm. went and looked right downstairs to see if I could yell for them and find out where they went to. And I saw that their car was gone. So I knew mm. that they weren't on the farm. They had to go somewhere else. And so I called my dad and I was like, hey, where's breakfast? And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, where's breakfast? I said, I just got up. I was going to eat breakfast. Where'd you put it? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Of course, my dad, he's hard of hearing. And so my mom grabbed the phone, got on the phone. She's like, what are you trying to ask? And I said, breakfast. I just got up and, and you were cooking breakfast. I was going to eat breakfast. She goes, I'm going to cook it breakfast. She goes, we've been gone all morning. <clears throat> I'm like, what do you mean you've been gone all morning? She said, we're in Bowling Green shopping. I said, no, you were just standing here at the stove in a pink house coat cooking breakfast. I mean, I just got up and saw you. She goes, no, we've been gone since like 6 a.m. She said, we're, we're all the way up in Bowling Green, Kentucky. She said, number one, I don't own a pink house coat. And number two, if somebody's in that house cooking breakfast, you need to get out and call the police. And so, so now, you know, what would you think that that is? Oh, obviously still <laughs> Correct. Is that, um, is it a time lapse? I'm so sorry, guys, with the dogs. Oh, that's fine. I'm just trying to trouble they're hearing. They're not you. happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, the neighbors are idiots. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> I don't. I don't know what it could have been because there were there was there were so many dynamics going on at that moment. So, number one, um, you know, my mother is alive and still is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. What was I looking at? The house we were in was a new home that they had just built. Um, the um, the appearance was so much like her, like it was it was uncanny. It was, I mean, it was her. You know, I looked and I saw it. It was her. I recognized it. Her. Um, you know, my my mother had me tell that story over and over and over when family would get together and start telling ghost stories or whatever. She's, hey, tell about your ghost that you saw. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't really know if it's a ghost or not. And so then I remember down the road, I was I was telling the story, and and I think my grandmother had passed away at that point. And I said something about I was talking, I got to the part about the pink house coat. And it was a quilted pink house coat. And my mom said, oh my gosh, 
she goes, I just remembered something. I was like, what? She goes, your grandmother made me a quilted pink house coat when your father and I got married. And I was like, well, that's weird. So, you know, it's like in, in no, she couldn't remember where it was. It's been lost for years, you know, it's, or mm-hmm. been gone for years. Um, so, you know, that, that thing was no longer in the house and no longer around. I had never seen it and she had forgotten it had been gone for so long. So, you know, what was it? Was it a, was it a, some sort of time slip? Was it some type of parallel universe? Was it, uh, some type of doppelganger or was it mm-hmm. something, you know, something else? Uh, yeah. I don't know, but it was, it was so vivid and so real there was no way that I could ever forget any element of, I mean, I could literally hear the, the spatula scratching the skillet as she was cooking. That was the part that was crazy. It was, it resonated so strong with me. I could smell all those breakfast smells, um, you know, and, and even hear the exhaust fan. That was, that was another part that just blew my mind. I was like, that exhaust fan was running. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it, it's really hard to say because I don't think it falls yeah. perfectly in any bucket that that we can that we we know in in our world. So yeah. it's very interesting. I mean, you heard you heard the like somebody was there. So yeah. it could have been sleeping time. It could have been a doppelganger. You, you, it could have been a couple of things. Yeah, and you can't specifically say what it is. No, it you doesn't. I mean? It doesn't fit neatly in any bucket that we as the living right. have created. <coughs> and you never seen it again so I, well i say i've never seen it again i did see uh it was it was years later i did see a woman walking down the road that i thought well that looks like mom but when i passed her i thought that was weird i looked in the mirror and she wasn't there so that's the only two times that i've ever seen that particular i'll call it an entity so yeah. it is strange strangeness yeah, yeah. Maybe it could be like a family member. How how long you have the farm? Was all the generations on that farm? It was just uh, no. It was it was bought in seventy eight. Okay. Um, I mean, but you know, it belonged to several other families before, and it was larger. There's there's several you know trees on the property that are probably pushing two fifty, two seventy five. Uh, wow. Years old, so there's a lot of there's a lot of witness trees, several witness trees. I'll put it that way, um, but many of them are gone. But there's several left. Um, you know, there's lots of you know uh, evidence of you know westward expansion here. I mean, there's an old wagon road that runs across the property that is very rese- resembles um, uh, the Oregon Trail. So if you go out and look at the Oregon Trail, it's you know mm-hmm. it's rutted out and it's about the width of a wagon. Uh, that's the same thing here. We've got a, a wagon trail that goes across the farm. That's it's wow. probably about you know eight ten feet wide, and maybe in some places six eight feet deep. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's cool. a lot of history that went through there. A lot mm-hmm. of history went you know through. I mean, there. was there anything with any of the the, uh, the Civil War or anything going through there? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yes. There have been uh, there have been muskets and and pistols that have been found uh, on the property and on the <clears> neighboring <throat> property. Um, I think one of the, one of the coolest things is when, when I can remember as a child, when we first moved here, um, we were row cropping. So we were, we were plowing and, and, and V ripping fields, stuff like that. My dad was, was plowing and ripping a field. Uh, we call it the bottom, uh, and it's, you know, the Creek bottom. And, um, every time we would turn that ground, I remember my dad would always walk the ground and look for artifacts or whatever. And he had, he had two five-gallon buckets full of arrowheads. I'm talking just full of arrowheads. Ooh, wow. um, they were, and, and just kept them in the barn, you know. It was just one of those things you just pick up and keep them because they're cool relics. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the interesting things <clears throat> he, he found was was out in the field as he was plowing, he hit two really huge ash pots, like where <laughs> fires had been for years and years and years. Um, so they were you know, very large in diameter, like mm-hmm. eight feet, eight feet diameter and, and, you know, deep, like six feet <laughs> deep. So, mm-hmm. um, it'd been a lot of, a lot of ash that been, fires have been burned there for a long time. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting. Native American. That. Correct. Yes. Correct. Wow. Even us New Yorkers know a little bit about that. <laughs> you know. A little bit about that. Oh, yeah, a little bit, you know, a little bit, you know, 
But that's <laughs> interesting. You know, uh, um, have you seen have you, have you seen anything on your land besides that? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Steph's been down here, and and yeah. you know, we'll walk the creeks, and and it's it's really cool because the creeks all haze hat. They have uh, fossils <clears throat> and artifacts that are in the creek. You know that you'll find and. You know, we were, I remember one time we were walking the creek and, um, you know, nobody right here in the immediate vicinity has, has horses. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we both were like, oh, it smells like a horse. Like you could smell it. It just like rushed up on us and you could smell what smelled just like a sweaty horse. And, uh, it's like something, something's here. I just don't know what it is That's other than probably a horse and probably, probably native, but, um, you know, and, and then there's been times when I've been on the back of the property late at night and seen <clears> things. Um, and one time I was burning a large brush pile back there late one night and I, I got ready to leave. And as I was in the tractor, as I turned the lights went across the field, I saw what looked like four, four horses up on the hill with people on them. And uh, I turned back and of course they were gone. There was nothing there. And uh, then um, <coughs> I recorded a very interesting <clears throat> sound one night actually put it on TikTok. Uh, it's been played, I don't know how many times now, but uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting sound and um, the, how it moved through the, the not only the, this property, but the land surrounding the property, um, I couldn't attribute it to um, human mm -hmm. movement because it was so fast, uh, covering a lot of ground. Uh, there was no mechanical sounds with it. Uh, even a horse couldn't have covered this, this type of distance in the time that it did. And then I was, we were trying to do some research, trying to see if it was some type of animal or bird or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then we started looking more into the historical record and Steph asked me, she said, have you ever looked into a Cherokee war cry? And I was like, no, I have not. And she goes, well, here, you need to hear this. And so she sent me a recording and it was nearly identical. Uh, um, so that was kind of cool. Um, uh, of course, I have I have Cherokee in my background, and I'm actually a descendant from the chief, from the chief of the Northern Tribes. So so it's kind of interesting that that those things occur around us here. Mm -hmm. hey, Stephanie, have you um, experienced anything like on the land too, or have right. you seen? Are you? I know being a psychic, you probably see more stuff than you want to admit to sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's just in passing, like I notice it, I don't say anything because it's just normal, yeah. But um, yeah. there, um, there's been a few times that he and I have had experiences together, whether it was in the house, whether it was in one of his uh, other houses on the property, mm -hmm. whether it was just walking around together. So um, it's, and it's always been different, different layers of history that we've come across. Um, anywhere from the Native American part to what would feel more like the farmland aspect mm -hmm. um, to past family members. So it's, um, I would say it's always been active for us, but it mm -hmm. is here too for both of us as well. Yeah. And I think that when we're together, more happens. So you guys probably together, like, you know, they come to you because the energy between you are a lot stronger. You're like beacons. Yeah. 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 And we discovered yep. that the hard way early on. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that the dogs have stopped barking, I can talk a little bit more. I had my <laughs> mic on mute. I'm so sorry. The dog That's literally okay. took everything. This is the dog that you met in the baby care. Okay. <laughs> He's no longer this big. <laughs> right. That happens. <laughs> so um, we have some questions. Someone asked if ghosts are real, are other supernatural creatures real as well? I think we know the answer to that one. <laughs> I, you know, it's safe to assume. Yeah, and th that's funny because my answer to that question, I, I get asked that question a lot for some reason, and and I and I always tell people they they aren't real to you until you experience one. Right. Once you experience it, then you know, because taking someone else's word for it, you know, that's great and good, but until you experience it, that you, you just, you don't have any idea what you're, what you're dealing with or what you're feeling or what you're seeing. Right. <clears throat> I think it's kind of like that with anything that you do though. We are, we're, we're a show me society. You know, we are like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I have to, yeah. I have to see the evidence. You know, I have to have yeah. something that satisfies myself. But not yeah. somebody else's evidence. 
your own right. advice. Right. You, you have mean, to have your own. Yeah, you know, well, um, there's so many people out there thinking that their evidence is evidence and anything else is not. Yeah, yeah I, I can understand that. You know, we've yeah. experienced it, but, you know, I, I'm an open book about that because going through the time I went through, you know, from the, you know, when people didn't believe me to now people starting believing a lot more, you know, how, how am I going to say to somebody, oh, no, there's no... There's no other creatures out there, just ghosts, mm -hmm. or UFOs, just ghosts. You never know. I mean, right, right. You experience yeah. anything. You could experience anything. So I always mm -hmm. give. I always give people the, um, you know, yes, that's cool. You know, never mm -hmm. no, no, nobody for anything. You know, yeah. just, just uh, you know, accept it. You know, it's you know being put down like you said. It's just ourselves, so. I think I think as we as we study and we learn, uh, and I think it's one of the one of the aspects of being a learned um, person <coughs> or a learned a learned entity. The more you discover and the and the more that you experience, the more you realize that there's so much more that you don't know and you don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and that you have to continue that effort and look outside the box because for so long, uh, you know, in, in history, you know, we information and knowledge didn't travel as quickly and as rapidly and as freely as it does now. And, you know, and that um, that's a good thing now because it does it does help us to be able to communicate with one another and it does help us to be able to con uh, contemplate ideas and and either validate or question those but then you add in the aspect of of our social society and and all of a sudden now you have you have a, a means for people who desire notoriety or publication or uh the the uh, uh admiration of others to come on the scene <clears throat> and 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 then present things that you know, call into question everything else that people are doing from a genuine standpoint. Um, and so it kind of, it kind of taints the pool of, of knowledge uh, for, for a lot of people. And I think that that's, that's the big hindrance that we have to fight is, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a good and bad dichotomy that goes along with the social media uh, and with our, 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 our able ability to be able to share knowledge so quickly is that you have these outside people that are forces that are, always looking to disrupt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I, I always talk a lot about um you know there are so many people that have written things that like say you have someone in china or you have somebody in ireland you have somebody in africa and they're writing things about say vampires and they look very similar when they describe them and, you know, they, they wrote these things before there was any kind of, you know, telecommunication or text messaging or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they're writing about the same types of things. Well, it's not the case where, okay, so he had a very um, creative mind and they're, they're talking to each other mentally. There had to have been something that would give them this idea that it's all mm -hmm. the same. You know, mm -hmm. so something's out there that looks like these things or leprechauns or hobbits or whatever. So there's definitely something out there, you know, beyond the veil mm -hmm. that it has to be there. There has to be something there. Oh, 100 percent. I think one of the first things that comes to my mind is when you when you look at different societies and you're talking about leprechauns or you're talking about uh, the Cherokee little people or you're talking about. Uh, Hawaiians and Steph, you're going to kill me because I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Menahune. Just Menahune. I said it. I know. It came out right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I it had a myself. little southern twist to it, just a little one. I was waiting thing. to say it wasn't exactly the right accent at the end. <laughs> it's it was okay. only it was, to say that. It was a large improvement. <laughs> okay. It was very really good, I think. I, I was channeling at that moment. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and, and you know, it's like you have all these different entities, and, and even um, oh gosh, what what do you call them up there, uh, babe? Uh, oh, you uh, don't want to try that one? Puckwudgies. Puckwudgies. I was waiting for that one. Got it. 
Okay. <laughs> so you have you know, all these different quote unquote small people or small mm -hmm. in stature beings. Uh, but it's interesting that they exist in all these different areas that were, you know, thousands of years before uh, technology freely moved mm -hmm. that information from place to place. Now, it's not to say that someone could not have traveled, but and, 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 and brought information, but but then you also had language barriers, you know, so you yeah. had to either draw pictures and and I don't think you know a lot of the a lot of the artistic nature of things then did, didn't really depict what what the similarities or things that we saw or the things that we see um but um i think it's intriguing that they all have those types of of uh of stories in in those societies as well as giants um yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and even even bigfoot sasquatch Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you 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 see that these <clears throat> stories and these uh, tales have existed in these different areas for so long, and, and it was long before that that free flowing information occurred. So there has to be something to it. Well, they're all mm -hmm. different based on geographical location. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Even Bigfoot is called Yeti, a bottom yeah. snowman. You know, different mm -hmm. things in different culture and different okay, locations. <clears throat> Is it the geographical location that changes the look of it, or mm -hmm. is it just the geographical location that changes the name of it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could be the same throughout everything, um, or it could be different. I actually had um, <coughs> a student of mine reach out to me and ask me about skinwalkers recently. And um, she was having a conversation with somebody, and I can't remember where they were from, but U.S.-based. And... Um, they were getting in an argument with somebody that was in the UK because the UK was using the word skinwalker. And they were trying to say that skinwalker is just a thing that's very specific to the US, but it's technically not specific to just the US. It's specific to where the particular tribe is that came up with the word skinwalker. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just the Americanized version of it. So, um, that was a whole rabbit hole, like what we're going down now. It's the same thing is it could be a similar creature or similar elemental, depending on, you know, what it is that we're talking about, mm -hmm. but um, they have their own name for it. Mm -hmm. So they might not be exactly the same. They might be exactly the same. We just don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like with Bigfoot, there's, you know, like you said, they're all over the world. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're different colors, they're different traits and stuff. Yep. Maybe they have to adapt to the location that they are in. Could That's be. why they look and smell all these different things because they, they had to adapt to the location. Like us as humans, we have to adapt right. to the location. Right. So maybe they had yeah. to adapt. That's why there's some taller, some smaller, and, you know, they're brown. They're, they have, yeah. uh, you know, you look at white and, um, you know, the yetis and stuff like that. Even, what, if the, what if they're I, aliens? Yeah. Well, listen, you had to. Yes. <laughs> I was going to talk about poor little bunny rabbits, and here you are talking about aliens. You can talk about bunny rabbits. But what if they're <laughs> aliens, and the reason they stink is because they've been in their ship for so long that they just smell? Yeah, they don't have the odor. The deodorant ran out. Oh my god. Okay, back to bunny rabbits. I'm sorry. I just, I just went off. I went off the rain, off the tracks. All I was going to say was, if you if you look at little bunny rabbits, they look different in different geographical locations. You know, right. some are, to adapt to those surroundings so they they hide right. better. Right. Yeah. Um, if if something as simple as a bunny rabbit can do that, why can't something that has supernatural abilities do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know. I don't. They really change. Yeah. No, yeah. you and your aliens. I'm just saying. I mean, Step that's all. Aliens, I hate aliens. <laughs> Hate's a very strong word. It is a very, very strong word. <laughs> she doesn't use it often, but whenever you mention aliens, she uses the word hate. That's when she uses it. Yeah, that's when she uses it. She is, she's is like, I hate. I like, am you know? good. It is not my thing. You know, like those people in the paranormal that just have to be an expert at everything. Mm -hmm. I don't care. <laughs> don't send so, me the so aliens. That's the one thing you don't even want to talk about. I don't even care. It's like. Nope. You shouldn't say you hate them because you you know they're listening. 
which is fine. Just leave me in my bed and I'm good. Let oh, me see, live my life. <coughs> you little so, duck, you know, they'll duck you and take you away. No, none of that. <laughs> I'm good. You don't want that. There's better options, I promise. <laughs> We're messing, messing with everybody's voices. Everybody sounds synthesized now. Hmm. Synthesized? Oh. Okay. Yeah, you just went you you just sounded synthesized and your voice changed. Um it's the aliens. Luffy wants to know, <laughs> Porter, do you have any issues with Native American spirits? Do I have any issues with them? Yes. No, not at all. Actually, no. uh, it's it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> one of the locations here in Tennessee that I've always been attracted to for some reason, um, even before I got you know really into the paranormal, everyone else talked about how they felt uncomfortable or uneasy at this location. And it's a frontier home. It was built in 1798. Um, the, uh, the the Winchesters lived there. They settled in the area. It was considered one of the grandest frontier homes of the land at the time. Um, you know, its its walls are twenty four inch thick crab orchard stone. Um, it's an amazing home. Um, it's built on what what I found out later was it's built on Cherokee hunting land. And okay. for years, I would go there, and I just I, I felt at home. I felt welcome. I felt like. I could go inside and just lay down and go to sleep. It was just, it felt like that to me. And everyone spoke of how, how haunted it was and how everything always caused mischief and problems. And even a friend of mine who was the curator of the museum there had problems for years and years and years. But for some reason, <laughs> when I would go there, I always felt at ease. Um, I had no idea that I had any relation to, to, to the Cherokee Nation. And, um, you know, it was funny because as I started going down that road of discovering that, uh, the things that led me to find it were, were very intriguing because I was doing some genealogical research and I got to my, my great, great grandmother and, um, I couldn't find any information about her. It was like, she just didn't, her family didn't exist. I was trying to track down info. And my grandfather said, you know, well, you, I was at his house one day before he passed and he was in his nineties then. And, and I said, uh, I said, Papa, I said, I get back to granny cat. Cause that's what we knew her as was cat. And, um, I said, I have a hard time. I can't find anything out about her. I said, I'm having a real hard time. He said, well, you're not going to find anything out. And he said, we didn't talk about her. I'm like, what do you mean? You didn't talk about her. And he said, well, he said, she was full blood Cherokee. And I was like, what do you mean she was full blood Cherokee? Because nobody knew this. He was the last living human on earth that <laughs> knew this. Wow. And um, no one else knew it. My mother didn't know it. Her brother didn't know it. Her sisters didn't know it. Nobody knew that. Um, and all of his brothers and sisters are gone. He was the last one. And uh, as I started digging, I started finding little pieces of information that kind of led me back to where she came from and how they married into the family to avoid the trail of tears and then tracking it back uh, you know there's still a few gaps that are missing that i need to get back on it and try to see if i can fill those gaps but um i could make some connections based on certain things i would find that said that they were the great granddaughter of so-and-so or great granddaughter of this person or great you know granddaughter of this one and and so i was able to make those jumps and it took us all the way back to uh, a very prominent cherokee <coughs> chief here in in tennessee and in northern alabama and georgia that was named hanging mall and um i never knew that so it was it was in, it was interesting to me to find that out and then of course the whole DNA testing thing came out and I'm like, yeah, I'll DNA test and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. As shooting, man, it came back and there was a touch of what it said was indigenous. And what was the other one in there? It was indigenous and, and something else that was kind of odd. Um, you had a lot but, of odd. Yeah, alien? Lot. It was alien. It was alien. No. Um, I can't remember what it was. It was something else that came up that yeah. was kind of strange. Such it was such a good was, comment. I can't publicly. You can't. It was from, uh, but it was from, you know, the Southern Americas. 
So it was kind of cool to see that that showed up. And of course, then as testings change and stuff, some things filtered out, but that indigenous blood piece still stayed in there. Of course, then if you go to anyone and ask, they'll tell you that there's not enough samples to truly show the indigenous blood. So they just, they're kind of taking a piece that doesn't fit neatly in the bucket and they're saying, okay, this is probably where it goes. But it's neat to have that along with the story that my grandfather told me. And then, you know, up until that point, all I knew about Granny Cat was that she cussed a lot and dipped snuff. And, you know, <laughs> that's, that's all I ever knew. Um, but yeah, they don't it, keep records like that. I mean, unless it's within the well, land. Well, and, and and they wouldn't keep records at that point of something of that nature because they were trying to hide it. So they completely, and I think a lot of people don't understand unless you really do the research how horrible it was for the indigenous people, for the Cherokee, mm -hmm. for others, and they were driven out. Um. I mean, they literally had to, in order to survive, they had to give up everything that made them them. I mean, even on the census records, when you look that up, you'll see that some of them placed in their in their race uh, that they were uh, Black Dutch. And the reason they did that was because no one knew what Black Dutch looked like. So they could write it down and be, oh, okay, they're they're Dutch and move on. Wow. Um, oh. Yeah, it was it was so strange. Yeah, of course, interesting. Then, yeah, they gave up their names. They gave up so much. I mean, like there's another lady, another woman who was a, who was an aunt uh, of mine back in the same period that we've kind of connected them a little bit. Uh, at one point we thought they were sisters and we're not really sure, but um, her name was Virginia, Tennessee. And that was her actual name. And it's on, it's on her tombstone. I can, she's buried, she's, she's actually buried right across the hill behind the house here. Um, and I can take you to her tombstone, in Virginia, <laughs> Tennessee. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting when you start digging into your genealogy and you find out who you came from, where you came from, you, you, and then it, 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 it makes you, you look at some of the that were odd and strange, um, that occurred to you, you know, maybe supernaturally or, in the paranormal, it, it kind of starts to put the pieces of the puzzle together and explain why you have certain experiences. Mm -hmm. mm, it's yeah. And like Steph's background, people would have hidden that before. And now people are like, oh, yeah, I want to be related to a witch. You know? yeah. <laughs> They're so ready to like announce that. Yeah, I have a lot of documentation from the 1700s and 1800s from my family. They didn't really hide it. Um, they just hid it behind organized religion. So like they were mm. still Catholic, Protestant, but all of their diaries and everything else, like they wrote about how people would come to their home looking for spell work, looking for healing, looking for readings. Um, it just wasn't like out in public. So. Yeah. It was so, interesting to see how rebellious. But they they probably did it in the way that the women, like that was just, oh, it was the Salem witch trials, and it wasn't it wasn't really a witch. They were healers, and they were just being accused. Um, I mean, well, the the generations that I have would have been probably about a hundred years after the Salem witch trials. Um, so, a hundred years is a long time for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, image to change in society. Um, I think the the aspect of oh they weren't really witches or they might have been something else really came later on. Um, I think even within our last hundred years here, people want to have a explanation as to why this happened because it's one of the most famous portions of history um, because. Mm -hmm when you look at it from an outside lens as if they're not witches, it's a horrific thing that occurred. Um, people want to blame it on the mold and the bread um, yeah. that made people, you know, crazy. That's been debunked too, but that's actually a really popular theory that people hold on to. Um, mm -hmm. If I read the accounts of um, my relatives that were hanged, um, and even captured because I have both. 
the reasons why they were accused are wild. There's one of them that I was reading to Scott at one point. And I'm like, there's absolutely no way you can't tell me that this woman had some sort of ability um, because of the stories that were told um, as to like so, what's going on. How many, <coughs> how many people actually related to? Um, two that I am solid about. Um, but I am sure that if there's two, there's more. Um, yeah. <clears throat> same thing with pilgrims. Um, there's a whole long list of pilgrims that I have to verify. And I laugh because, like I said, they only had so many options to procreate. So <laughs> um, they were busy. Yeah. But um, it, it, I have Native American, too. But that's not documented anywhere. And the only option that I would have would be the pilgrims that came over. Mm -hmm. So, But they wouldn't have talked about that. They would have kept of that under wraps. Not. They yeah. absolutely yeah. didn't yeah. talk about that. So, yeah, it was cold in the winter, and you had to keep warm somehow. Yeah, yeah quick, quick run. I mean, <laughs> not a bad option. <laughs> There's a fire in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quick run in there. <laughs> I, I'm sure that, like, I will find something. And I've been doing genealogy, but my family came from from England to like the North England, like New England states yep. and like Virginia. And there's definitely something there because it's just like a tingle when you get into yeah. Salem area, there's, and, and definitely in the Philly area, as soon as I got in there, it was definitely a different feeling. I mean, where there's so much history and there's so much that's happened, it's not, um, it's, I don't know, maybe I'm different, but to me, it's like, it's a no brainer that there's so much energy collected in one area. Um, something like, like Salem, the, um, the wonderful witches of Salem have done so much good when it comes to, um, keeping Salem the way it is and mm -hmm. keeping it alive. Um, you know, I know Lori Cabot has, Christian Day has, and, um, I think that that really makes it as special as it is too. Yeah. It's, it's hard <coughs> to spend time there, um, knowing what you know and see everyone, you know, running around with witch hats and capes and mm -hmm. you have that feeling of dread in your stomach, just knowing what happened there. Yep. It's not for entertainment. It's not, um, I mean, clearly you're there to also have fun, but just the feeling of getting sick to your stomach, knowing what happened to these people. It was, yeah. it was a terrible feeling uh, being there for me. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, Cause tourism keeps things alive. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Scott is probably sitting there thinking he's heard me say this about a thousand million, maybe more times um, <clears throat> when it comes to who I am and my culture um people every single day no matter where i go turn my culture into a fun thing or a job or a way to become famous or a way to have some type of lucrative income um they wake up and they're like i'm a witch exactly mm -hmm. i'm a witch because i went and i bought crystals okay great if you yeah. want to be, learn from a legitimate source. That's wonderful. I think it's something that everybody can learn, and that's great. But why do you want to learn it? And yeah. I say that to people all the time. Why do you want to learn it? Don't um, do it because you want to make yourself interesting. Yep. Do it because um, there's something deep inside of you that that's who you are. Yep. Or maybe it's part of your ancestors' culture, and that's wonderful, too. Um, and then the psychic medium aspect, which I'm sure you've dealt with, too. Um, I want to be a psychic medium. Okay, great. Why? Mm -hmm. What is your reasoning? What is your why? And some people have an absolute legitimate reason. You know, they've experienced as a child. They want to do this. They want to do that. Some people think that it's the key to making all kinds of money. Some people think it's, it's the way to become the one different person on your paranormal team or the one thing that sets you apart from everybody else trying to be casted on a TV show. And that stuff will forever drive me crazy. Um, because like I said, never 
to make money off of this. You're not going to be famous. You're not going to be more entertaining than anyone else. <laughs> I mean, someone will stab it. you back and stab you in the face at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot that goes on, and I mean, that's why I, I I keep to myself most of the time. But it's it's tough for me because again. It's, it's something that ran through my family for so long. It's something that my ancestors survived. You know, mm -hmm. that's the reason I'm sitting here right now is because like part of them survived in order to, you know, land me here, yeah. um, despite being different, um, having it passed down to me <laughs> and it's like a weird responsibility. And I tried to run from it as far as I could. I didn't mm -hmm. get very far at all. Um, it quite literally haunted me until I agreed to it. So um, I used to tell people if I could scrub the psychic off of me with a bar of soap, I would have. Um, really? Would you? Huh? You would? I would have at some point in my life. Yes. I wouldn't, but. I It tortured me as a preteen. Yeah, that's about um, what it was for me too. You know, when I was 12 in, in middle school, first of all, middle school sucks. Yeah, it does. Like, so does high school. And I was already shy and, you know, my friends would write me little notes and I would write back and everything I wrote back because, you know, cell phones weren't a thing back then. You had to put the little note in the locker and hope that your friend got it in between periods and they didn't get it too late and they could write back on time. And yeah, um, now text messaging makes life so much easier. But um, during that time, I would write, you know, advice and it would all come true. So they used to call me fortune cookie. And I didn't understand what I was doing at that time. And it just got worse from there. Um, it grew as I grew. Um, I would have to make excuse after excuse after excuse as to why I was so socially awkward. And I could tell you what you were thinking before you said it out loud. I would finish your sentences for you. I would say the same things at the same time as you. Um, and then never mind adding dead people to the mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was just like a whole other level of absolute insanity that I'm like, I want to just stay home and hide. If I just throw a blanket over my head, like I don't have to deal with any of it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And it really does. It makes you want to be a recluse. It makes you want to just kind of like hide from the world and be like, no, I'm, you know, I don't enjoy being different and I'm, I'm fine. But um, hell, I remember the, the first time somebody posted about me being a psychic medium on Facebook I was probably 19. Mm -hmm. I had a meltdown, like a full-blown panic attack. Like, please don't tell people this yeah. um, because I just wanted to fit in. And I was okay doing it, like, at home. I was fine at home. Like, every, every cultural ritual that you could imagine that I grew up with, I was fine with. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking to the dead at home, I was fine with. Please don't put it out in public. And here I am. <laughs> Four TV shows later, but believe you, and they tell you that you're a moron, and oh, Maureen, that's that's not even true. That this is not even real, and it's even worse yet when you finally do come out of the broom closet, broom and closet, you are like, like an active member and an active politician <coughs> when you cancel trick or treating because of severe weather, and then everybody does a huge witch hunt, and they're putting your social media on everything to humiliate you publicly and just attack you and give you death threats and it's just horrible so anybody out there who's thinking that this is amazing it's not, it's not, there it's not, are. not. there's a lot of people and you know i've been doing this long enough where um it comes in waves you have mm -hmm. people come in they think that they're going to be the next big psychic um, or the next big ghost hunter. And then when it doesn't happen, they die off and you never see them again. And it's been happening forever and ever. And it's like at this point, like it's a part of who I am. If TV died off tomorrow, if social media never existed, I would still be doing this. Same. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even care if it's just like every time Scott and I are together, if you, I wake this poor man up in the morning with just like some random philosophical question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, he doesn't even get to say good morning or open his eyes yet. I'm just, like, you know, like, staring at him, like, hi. <laughs> you know, thank God you're awake. I have this question for you. Um, and it could be anywhere between discussing the Bible to the paranormal to politics to, like, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Or just, like, why is the sky blue? 
Mm-hmm. Why do dogs smell funny in the rain? <laughs> like, you know, what is it? But um, why do know, puppies I, have hot dog breath? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and and their feet smell like toast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Their feet smell like Cheetos. <laughs> uh, Fritos, for sure. Fritos. Fritos. But um, yeah, it's uh, you know, I he puts up with me, and I love him greatly for it. But you know, this is our relationship. Like, if we go, we just went on a road trip what this past weekend, mm-hmm. and our conversations are so deep and like into all of this stuff. Like, mm-hmm. that's what we talk about when we're alone. You know, I always say, like, if somebody could see inside of our inner, you know, inner workings in our inner Mm -hmm. bubble, they would see that we're no different when we're alone and just the two of us than we are on a television show or while Mm -hmm. we're doing a lecture in public or while we're doing something like this. Like, we quite literally both love history as much as the other one does. And the adventures that we've been on have been phenomenal, I think, because we're both on the same page when it comes to that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're the most soft-spoken psychic I ever heard. What did you say? Did I'm sorry. You're the most soft-spoken psychic, because usually psychics I, I deal with, or yeah, you know, <laughs> right, 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 Would you ever believe that I'm part Sicilian? No. No. Hey, oh, I like that. <laughs> paisan, you're paisan. Yep. In a. I mean, soft spoken. Scott can just take that away and probably talk about that for the next hour alone. Soothing voice stuff. Like, mm-hmm. thank you. I can just sit here and, and like, not you don't put me to sleep. It's like a meditative kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I know somebody that falls asleep mm-hmm. to it all the time. Really? I have to- I have told her that she needed to have recordings out there where she just talk, just yeah. talk, like and yeah. and and just meditative talk and. You know, be like, okay, this is your sleeping talk, or this is, you know, this is your relaxing <laughs> talk, or whatever. And, and just her voice, um, you know, as long as she's speaking into a microphone where you can hear her, uh, that is, you know, that, that works great. Um, if, if she's talking to me, it's like I have to, you know, get the long distance radar and plug it in my ears and turn all the way up and make sure I can hear her. But she's very cool. She's very quiet. She's very yeah. soft spoken. But I used to. I did um, past life regressions in person. I haven't done one in a while, but he would be with me. And, you know, I, I walk people through, you know, every step. And I would start to hear this light snoring that would turn into, like, this louder snoring. And I'd have to, like, sneak across the room in the middle of, like, trying to regress people into their past lives to whack him and be like, goodbye. Like, go. Because you're going to keep them awake. <laughs> Like I was really relaxed. That was not yeah, awesome. but he does it all the time. <laughs> He'll fall asleep on the phone with me. Oh my god! Uh, I, I think all so guys awesome. do that with their wives. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, not yeah, my husband because I'm loud. Yo, yeah, I'm kidding. not. I've <laughs> never been loud. And like part of me wishes that I was normal in that aspect too, because my poor mother has yelled at me my entire life for the same thing. She's like, I can't hear you. The only person that can hear me and hear everything I say is my brother. That's because usually when you're talking to him, he's pissed you off. So you're yelling at that point. So you know. <laughs> I think it's just because we're we're almost three years apart. So we spent so much time just the two of us growing up that he's just gotten used to me and he can just hear everything I say. So my daughter's really good at hearing me too. So. Well, it's because she can hear, she's young and she can still hear at those frequencies. And you know, she picks up on that. Me, I just have to, I hear your voice and then I just make up whatever I think oh my it God. might have said. And then we go from there. You had some good ones this past weekend. I did with those kids. No, not public. There. I, <laughs> I, uh, I told him he has to bring back the WTF did you say, babe? Because there is an entire list. There is. Like. There is. An insane list that we've just never put out there. <laughs> well, it's funny that you said that because there are some questions here. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things that was said, I think. So, um, Stephanie, at what age did you know you had abilities? Sorry if you mentioned this. Wasn't able to be on at the beginning of the show. That's from Todd and Carmela. So... What age I knew I had abilities, um, mm-hmm. 
I had them from the time I was born. Um, I had experiences like I can remember seeing spirits when I was about like 18 months old. I was talking about everything when I was, oh gosh, I think there's a VHS tape. <clears throat> um, I'll have to show it to you, babe, next time you come. Mm-hmm. Break out the VHS player. Um, my parents would record Christmas morning and I would just pick up a box and hold it and hand it back to my mom still wrapped and say, thank you, mama, so much for buying me this. And you can hear my dad go, is that really what's in the box? And she's like gritting through her teeth with anger, like, yes, that's what it is. Because she was so annoyed that I just knew. So we couldn't have presents around me at all until I was much older. Um, And I could like resist not touching them. So um, I was just this weird kid up until age seven when I first lost my grandmother. And at that point in time, I realized what it was like to have her physically. And then on the other side. And at that moment, it was just like this god awful realization of what death actually meant. And then I realized at that point that everybody I had talked to prior to that was actually dead and not alive. So it was a weird wake up call. Um, I, I think I took it better than what most people would have. But I've, I was born this way. I don't know what it's like to be normal. So. So when she passed away, <laughs> and you felt that like disconnect from like living to not living. Is that when you feel like you realize that? it there was um like you weren't you had abilities um i can't even say i felt like i had abilities because i didn't know what abilities were so um and there wasn't a disconnect when she passed it was i could see her physically one moment and then i could see her in a different form so i was like okay i can't like everybody's crying and saying that you died and um there was no funeral or body or anything like that she was cremated so I didn't have that visualization to to add to the mix, but um, my mom was really good at explaining what had happened, but she showed up immediately to me, mm-hmm. and then she showed up every single night for a really long time, and I would just pass messages back and forth between her and my mom, because um, my mom was way too grief-stricken to, to deal with all of it herself, and mm-hmm. um, so <clears throat> when I think, when did I come to the realization that I had abilities? I, I quickly found out that I was much different than everybody else. I would say probably in like preteen years. And okay. I started to realize that nobody else talked about this stuff. And I remember sitting my mom down when I was probably about like 14. I'm like, okay, listen, our house is haunted. And she's like, no, no. I'm like, mom. And she was a nurse. I was like, you can either take me to get medication or you can tell me the truth because I have seen people my entire life. I have conversations with them. Like, this is George. This is whoever. <laughs> she's going on and on. She just laughed out loud. She's like, okay, fine. Because she used to tell me ghosts weren't real just so I would go to sleep. Yeah. So <laughs> um, it didn't work yeah, I at all. <laughs> nope. Nope. She knew I talked to past loved ones, but and she knew the house was haunted. But she yeah. just thought, like, maybe if she just told me it wasn't real, I'd just sleep and I'd be fine. But that didn't work. So she saw them as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's where I get my gifts from. Okay. Yeah. It's usually handed down. Yeah. Um, I know my family's <laughs> been handed down also. Yeah. I come from a Sicilian family, so they they all had it. Yeah. It was more, more on the women's side. Because at birth, I almost died. Yeah. I was, I was born and I had yeah. um, issues. And um, they had me. They didn't go away, Anthony. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say something. Just leave it to me. I'll take care of it. I was was fighting and I was like, oh my gosh, thank you for saying that. Yeah. (laughs) So I, I, you know, um, I almost died. So I think because of that, it really, we had no, my family's all boys. So it actually went from my mother's side to, Mm -hmm. to me. It could be on my grandfather's side, but the men didn't ever talk about it. They also saying, guys, yeah. uh, that was like a weakness or something. They didn't want to yep. talk about things like that. So that's how I got my abilities through the family. <laughs> a lot of times it's, it is to best down from generation to generation. Yep. You know, you know, did you have a weird birth? Huh? huh? Did, Steph, did you have a weird birth? A weird because birth? I, I almost died at birth as well. <clears throat> I don't think I had a weird birth. I was upside down. I know that. Um, and I refused to come out. But other than that, I think I think I was normal. 
You like um, the wound to wound service, huh? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was. I it was warm. Issues. She hates the cold. So yeah, it was cold out there. I mean, I ended up in the hospital the the same week I was born for like some issues, but not anything wild that you know well, put my life in danger. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, near death experiences happen later on in life, and you know, made things interesting. So yeah. there was no dull moments. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> Um, okay. What would be the common cryptid creature that might be mentioned in Tennessee from Barry Marks? Hi, Barry. The common cryptid creature. Mm -hmm. In Tennessee. Would that be like Bigfoot? Well, skinwalking, huh? Well, there's a little bit of all of them. Um, I was trying to think. I, I literally was just digging into something and that's why my brain is kind of fried um i was digging into yes kind of um where was it at i just had it pulled up and what i was looking at were mythical creatures um known to the cherokee nation and it was it was interesting because there were several <laughs> Bigfoot, Sasquatch being one of them. Um, let me see here. I know they had the Thunderbird and all that stuff. All, all of that stuff. Um, there was, there's like the, you know, I mean, you hear tales of all kinds of things around. I, mean, I could go and say that the woman in white, um, the, the of course the little people there's there's all kinds of tales when you get into east tennessee and into the mountains and, you know it's like that's a big problem there the, is the appalachian mountains the appalachian <laughs> mountains are, are, are a huge issue um you know with people singing or people calling to you to come to the woods and, mm-hmm. and you know things like that there's so that the blue um, people there the blue people yeah I don't know of blue people. I don't know green about people, that. Green people, I think. No, I think they want blue, aren't they? No uh, green, no gray. No green, no gray. gray. <laughs> no, I'm talking because um, it was. I, I'm not sure if it was in Tennessee or Kentucky where it was, but they did have a, a group of people that were in the mountains and they, they had problems oh. breathing, but they were blue. But everybody yeah. thought they were. That oh, because the oxygen supply, <clears throat> probably. Well, no, there was a. Um, there was a um it was a it was a pigment disorder and oh well i i know exactly what you're talking about but i can't remember now the because they were it was almost they were they called them blue people but they looked almost purplish blue it was like um oh yeah i know exactly what you're talking about um now i can't remember what caused it it seems like there was something too uh, much white lightning (laughs) Too much white lightning could be in it. Too much, too much uh, yeah, radiator lead. You know that kind of thing. Um, there's a bunch of stories about it. Bunch of stories about it. Um, but I mean, you know, you hear things. People see stuff, hear stuff. There's, there's, there's the deer man. I think there's a guy who's supposed to have a deer head, uh, a deer antler, antlers on his head. Um, oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. <clears throat> oh gosh, I'm trying to remember all the different ones. That there's there's a lot like the Amish goat. Oh, hmm. could could be something similar there. Um, I was trying to think. There was there was there's another one that's really just eluding me right now. That I, <coughs> it's right there, and I just can't remember what it's called. But yeah, you know, people see things, hear things, and then you know there's stories that have been handed down. But I know that specifically, there's probably like ten or twelve specific creatures that uh, that the Cherokee people talked about being in the mountains of East Tennessee, mm-hmm. and those are really cool. Because I, I was just digging into those. I think one of those was the was the deer head person. I can't deer head man. I can't remember what they call them now. Anyway, but yeah, there's there's a bunch of them here. Um, did you on your, on your property? Do you have any? Paintings from the um, Native Americans anywhere? You know, they, no, they, no, no. Th- there's no caves here. So there's no cave art. There's nothing like that. Um, and 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 the sad part is that uh, they they used to use uh, they would, they would bend trees. So they'd find a sapling and they would bend it to where it would lay over. And as it grew, mm-hmm. it would it would lay over and then it would grow back up. 
and so what what it did is where it grew up so this would be the trunk of the tree it would bend it over and it would and it would grow back up like this mm -hmm. it would it would point the direction of a trail and that's how they navigated so oh, these wow. so these trees would be around and i can remember <coughs> as a kid there were trees that were like that on the farm um and of course you had you know you had trails all through tennessee where they would go because these were all middle tennessee hunting grounds um but they would bend those trees and and that would that would that's how they knew where they were going no that's interesting i, well, I didn't even know that i, I just learned something that's, yeah, that's really cool. cool yeah that's, that's cool really stuff cool how they uh they did that i mean you get in the woods you become familiar with the woods and and you you know i mean me growing up here you know you get you get out in big big woods um and and it's it's interesting because everything starts to look the same you know and you have to mm -hmm. really if you're not really familiar with the land you have to figure out which way you're going and even when you are <clears throat> i mean i hunted I, I used to hunt a lot um up at you know, fort campbell and over at uh land between the lakes and when you get back in those woods you're, you're talking you know five miles or so to the next road and if you get in there and get turned around it it's it's easy to lose track of where you're at especially when it starts getting dark because then things start looking exactly the same and you know you mm -hmm. just don't have a full picture yeah. so you know it's nice to have those landmarks because if they had to move you know at night they had something to rely on they could say okay we're here we need to go this direction you know look at the stars <clears> or the moon and, and follow a direction and then find another tree and say okay we're on the right path oh that's, that's pretty cool and breadcrumbs don't work. No, those pesky squirrels eat them every time. Squirrels, <laughs> the one that you're after. That's it. Yeah, you're trying to catch them. You're trying to catch them because they're eating your um, the bread trail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, oh, I'm going to tell you one of the big ones I always talk about, and I can't believe I just forgot about this. Was the moon-eyed people? Uh, and I think I talked about the little people, the moon-eyed people. Mm -hmm. um and and when you get down into where uh the cherokee uh they where they live predominantly um uh, there were stories back in you know the early uh, ancestry of them where they lived across the river from each other uh and some some people believe that the moon-eyed people were where some of the cherokee got their blue eyes uh, because some cherokee had blue eyes oh wow yeah and it was said that they they, they were nocturnal <laughs> Uh, their eyes were very sensitive to light and they could see better at dark okay that's i mean that's like a cat or something like that uh, the yeah. this so is like could, the best history lesson ever i know this is pretty <laughs> cool i mean <laughs> i'm learning uh, something good so todd and carmela say maureen and stephanie did you notice any changes personally with increased experiences before during or after the solar eclipse um anything out of the ordinary no nothing um <clears throat> nope but i also i mean scott will tell you the same thing like i follow astrology pretty closely so we have eclipses every year um <clears throat> this one was a bigger deal for a lot of people because more people could see um more of the actual eclipse rather than um, you know, the usual, um, you know, it's happening, but we don't know it or we can't see it type of thing. But, um, I pay attention to a lot of that stuff. So everything that does occur, I kind of just roll with, <laughs> um, you know, it's not like a, this huge ordeal for me where, you know, it's this like life changing thing. Um, or at least not this one life changing things can occur to a lot of people during the eclipse. Um, yeah. because eclipses bring really chaotic energy and they're always back to back. Um, mm -hmm. so during that small time in between, it's complete chaos for most people. And, um, a lot of life changing events do happen to people during that time, but that's cause they're meant to, it really does shake up what's going on. Um, some really catastrophic things can happen, you know, breakups and, um, you know, people exiting your life or, you know, somebody coming into your life for a reason. So, um, I can't say anything like that happened to me this time, but, um, you know, the usual, like just, just the chaos, everybody's chaotic and we have a mercury yeah. retrograde on top of it. So that didn't make anything easy for anybody. <laughs> Did you notice an uptick in psychic, like, or, uh, paranormal activity? 
paranormal. I don't. I wouldn't say any more than usual. But I was also on the road during the eclipse, so um, we were driving. Okay. okay. We were driving for hours during that time. Blast. <laughs> 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 Um, we, were, we were driving for hours in the middle of a rainstorm, true, yeah, thunderstorm. True. So yeah. that's always yeah. fun. Even worse. Yeah. That's always good. Uh, and, so, uh, I'll see this. I'm going to investigation this weekend, so I'll see if anything amped up. So yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I have a, an autonomic disorder, and I don't. Well, the East Coast had the earthquake i didn't feel it personally but i don't know if it had any kind of like <clears throat> barometric pressure issues which always starts like i don't know it starts to create issues plus the weather changed and you know the eclipse so that's always a fun time mm -hmm. and um but i did notice that there was an uptick also with um paranormal activity in the house there's some kind of male entity that's walking along my side of the bed and he's waking me up but mm. is not giving me any information so that's i don't know yeah <clears throat> but like i'm really dizzy and i'm losing my eyesight and my left eye and i'm <clears throat> terrible migraine and i feel like i'm walking sideways like i'm on a boat kind of and i'm terrible on boats so Todd's having a great time with that. Yeah. <laughs> he's not, he's not, <laughs> that. but we are going to invest <laughs> Sunday. So we'll see if that, I mean, like usually when I get like this, all my senses are super, super heightened. So mm -hmm. that should help a little, but it's not going to be good. Cause I feel like I'm going to vomit everywhere too. Yeah. Um, that. That's good. So we'll see how, how things go. Uh, let's see. Scott, have you ever had an uh, out-of-body experience where you visited your Native American ancestors? <clears throat> well, let's see. They have <laughs> they have visited me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm trying to think. The only time that that I've ever had a situation where I was, uh, I felt like it was an out of body experience, I guess you would say, it was I was driving, I was driving down, I was actually driving at 840. And for some reason, I was really focused on the concept of out of body. <clears throat> um, and, and, and was really digging into and exploring those concepts and, and, and people who had had those experiences and those who said that they could um astral project um and 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 things of that and so i'd been reading a lot of that and so i remember i was driving down the road and i, I can tell you exactly where i was i was on interstate 840 here in tennessee and i was passing the um um the renaissance castle down there and as i passed it i remember there for just a split moment it was almost as if i was looking through the window of my truck and seeing me <clears> sitting <throat> in the truck while I was driving, but yet I was driving. And I was, when I realized that what was going on, it was like, I, I snapped out of it. it was right. And then and I was back there and I was like, holy cow, that was weird. You know, and, and I didn't try that anymore. Um, but it was just, it was intriguing that that happened that way. And I, I can't remember who all I told about it. Um, matter of fact, I think I just talked about it this weekend, didn't I? I don't remember. Maybe not when I was in the room. I don't remember if I talked. Well, yeah. Anyway, um, but it's funny because that that doesn't come up very often. But I, I remember that one time that I did that <laughs> one time. Um, <laughs> but um, every other every other experience I've had as far as the Cherokee or for the Native American goes, um, they've they come to me. You. I, they yeah. find me. Uh, we were investigating or doing a, a, a group investigation uh, in Virginia one time and had no concept of there being Native Americans there or anything of that nature. And <clears throat> um, I was standing there and we were playing a, a, an Iroquois, Iroquois chant, wasn't it? Iroquois war chant or something of that nature. And um, something happened. And, and I remember there was a, a several... Uh, 
EMF detection devices uh, that were around me and they all lit up and I felt a just a cold chill. And when we finished that part of the investigation, Stephanie looked at me and she said, did you see that? I said, I, you know, no, I didn't, I didn't see anything. And she said, well, let's try, let's try <clears throat> putting you down here away from everyone and let's try this experiment again. And so we, I got, a, I separated myself from everybody. Everybody was standing around the banisters, you know, the balconies and looking and watching. Everybody was around and all of the, the rooms were kind of how we did that investigation and started playing uh, that war chant or that, that, that music again. And there was an entity that formed at the bottom of the staircase that, and the only way I could <coughs> describe it was, I said, it looked like, the uh, the Krampus, like if oh, if you okay. if if not the facial features but the overall body shape, mm -hmm. uh, with something coming up out of the head, and as it formed, it was more it was more of a shadowy figure than a full color or um, full full body figure. It was more of a shadowy figure, and as it was making its way up the steps, it was coming toward me. And I remember it, it made me feel um, comfortable. Like it didn't make me feel as though I was in danger or that I should yell or be shocked. And I remember putting my hands out in front of me and backing up against the, the wall, uh, trying to give it room to come up the steps. And the, the only way I could describe the feeling from my hands as I held my hands out in front of me was it was like, it was as if you had mm -hmm. a string that was all the way inside my finger and in my hands and up into my arms. And it was being pulled out toward it, like out of every finger. It was like there were spider webs coming out of every single finger. Um, there was, there was a lady who was sent standing on the, the balcony behind me uh, in a doorway and she screamed. And when she did this, this entity kind of looked up, lumbered and looked up the, at her and then looked back down and then turned and disappeared through the wall. Um, and then when Steph and I talked about it, she said, she said, the thing that came upstairs and looked you in the face was a Cherokee warrior and he called you brother. Now this was before I knew that I mm -hmm. had Native American blood. Uh, and I was like, well, that's weird. And I said, well, I said, the one thing that I saw come up the steps, I said, it looked kind of like a Cherokee or, or a Native American chief or or a, a medicine man type of thing. And so when we found the woman who screamed, we asked her what she saw. And she said it was this Indian coming up the steps and he looked like he was just, you know, a, a chief or something. So oh, it was weird that we had not <coughs> spoken, her, but, but she had the, the same intention and saw the same thing um so that was that was really weird um but, but like i said it made me feel comfortable and then when i went back and started doing research i actually found a photo of what was considered a cherokee medicine man uh and, and it looks very very similar to what i described uh and mm -hmm. i had never i had never done the research before so that was kind of that was kind of cool Ooh, i think you stay yeah, yeah. I had never done the research on that, never seen it before. I couldn't have told you before that night that, that the Cherokee Nation even had a, uh, or Cherokee people even had a medicine man. Uh, so it was, it was interesting. So I guess through your blood, they have a connection with you. I, I think that, I think that's very important. No, you know, the, the part of being able to know where you're from, because I think that's how they, I think it's one of the big connections they have. Mm -hmm. uh, also <clears throat> knowing, knowing, you know, we're all individuals, you know, we're, we're allowed free will. Mm -hmm. And I think knowing what your intentions are and knowing, um, they, they know what your intentions are. They know what your makeup is. They know, they know if you mean harm or if you mean good. And, and in, in this particular situation, I mean, I think they, they knew it was time to show themselves to me for some reason. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, like with attachments and stuff, when people get attachments, usually <clears throat> something that they're attracted to within you. So, I mean, that's why I feel with the, when it comes to like uh, attachments to somebody, when you come home, and, I call them travelers. They, they, they follow you home. You mm -hmm. know, 
<laughs> the same and, thing sometimes. And yeah. some of that, for sure. I mean, I think some of it, too, is just misinterpretation. I think that people, they have things that happen, and then um, along the way, they start sensing that it's maybe something that is uh, negative. You know, when you think about, mm -hmm. think about our own personalities, if we were trying to get someone's attention, and they were ignoring us, and they were, and we had something to tell them, it would frustrate us, and so we would get more angry. Uh, you know, I think yeah. that can happen at sometimes too. I mean, it, it, there's so many different ways to look at it and think about it, um, and, and it's not always such a negative thing to think. You know, it's not a not such it's not a negative thing that's actually that's the actual reason for it to be there. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, when it comes to that, that's interesting how the spirits. Uh, Indians, uh, you know, the Native Americans. Yeah. I'm yeah. old school. I still say Indians once in a while. Oh, know. no, it's fine. I, I, it doesn't, bother, doesn't bother me a bit. And, uh, and everyone yeah, that I'm, I'm not too politically correct. Well, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't get butt hurt either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like uh, you, I go to, we go to Hawaii and, and <coughs> Native Hawaiian people will, will refer to us as Hallies. And that's that's how they refer to white people. Um, well, they don't refer and, to us as Howleys. Well, not refer to us. I mean, but and but Howley Howley truly we're, means we're foreigner. It does. That's their word well, for foreigner. But it's funny because, like, you know, they they re they refer to you as that, and <laughs> and it's it's, you know, people talk about words and intention, and I think that's something that we need to really really think about as 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 a society, and don't be so quick to jump on the negative aspect of things. It's a language and a term. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not be negative anymore. You know, it may not be. It may mm -hmm. not. Someone may not mean it with the with the, <coughs> the inflection or in, in with the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The fervor or the intention. You know, it may just be a, a, a term for description. I agree. I think it's all about intention and perception with everything. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Steph, what do you think is the source of your family's gifts, historically speaking? Historically speaking, I don't know. Um, and I think at this point in time with how far we've gone from those generations, there might never be an answer. But I do know that a lot of my abilities are linked to the Irish side of myself. Um, also, I mean, that particular line is also the Italian, um, but also Egyptian. Mm -hmm. So those are all cultures that practiced magic pretty regularly and outwardly. That's right. So um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if there's one source. Um, it could be multiple. It could be the three of them that came together at some point. Um, I'll probably never know, but I think digging into that genealogy, like Scott was saying before, um, <clears throat> it's so important to know where you came from. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> something as simple as, um, knowing what to work with or knowing, you know, mm -hmm. what to call on. Um, a funny example, but a lot of people turn to California white sage to smudge, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody turns toward it. And it's the funniest thing in the entire world because um, Native Americans don't use that for clearing mm -hmm. of energy. But a lot of people don't know that. Um, they use sagebrush. Um, a very common thing that happens to our friend Lopaka in um, Hawaii is they'll say to him, like, why don't you just use sage? He's like, that's not indigenous to my people. Like, it doesn't grow in Hawaii. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. He's like, so why would I? So he uses what is his ancestors have been using for thousands of years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and we're familiar with those ways, too. And I tell people all the time, like, if we're in Hawaii, you have to do it the way the Hawaiians do it. Otherwise, right. it's not going to work. You can't just take what your belief is just randomly and just slap it onto that. So I think knowing where you're going and what they do mm -hmm. and culturally what your ancestors did. There has to be a combination of that, you know, together. So um, I always, I encourage people to just figure out where they, they came from. Um, mm -hmm. It's so simple to do like an ancestry DNA test or 23 and me um, mm -hmm. just to get an idea, especially if you didn't grow up with culture. I was very, very fortunate to grow up in many different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, all of my grandparents are straight off the boat from somewhere. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's something that like <laughs> I would go to one grandmother's house and it would be all, you know, Polish. My grandfather was German. Um, and they're, they're different, um, cultural traditions. And then on the other side, the Italian and the, the Irish and, um, mm -hmm. you know, everything intermixed, you know, between that, but it was fascinating. So like, I actually, um, I spoke fluent Polish when I was a kid and I thought all that was normal. Like everybody else had that opportunity to just grow up that way and mm -hmm. experience that stuff. So I'm very fortunate Dubs that I. I was able to. Dubs uh, <laughs> <coughs> um, to be able to, to experience something like that. So um, I don't know. I, I vote for everybody to do it. If you can figure out where you come from, you might find your magic that way. I did mine. Yep. And there were things in there that I never, ever in a million years would have thought would show up in there. Yep. My mom passed away. Um, and I, I tell people all the time that she, she would be mind blown if she heard what was on there because she was so proud of her Irish heritage and she wasn't just Irish, but that's all she told anybody she was. Yep. And if she heard what was in there, she would really be mind blown. And yep. I'm like mm -hmm. super stunned. And like, you still get updates. And I don't think a lot of people realize this. You guilt, you still get some yep. updates when more and more people do theirs. If yep. there's mm -hmm. something that wasn't like enough of like say Swedish, if, not enough Swedish people did theirs and it sh like suddenly shows up as a larger percentage and you do yours, it'll come in and it'll show that your, you know, your percentage finally shows up out of the blue. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like the native American. Yeah. It takes forever for that to show up. So if you do have it, it's, um, it's really fascinating. Todd mm -hmm. had a super mm -hmm. rare form of, of Jewish, and he's like, I, I don't even know where this came from. My mother always <laughs> told us that we were German. And I'm like, well, you're not. You're Jewish. Right. <laughs> yeah, or your family could have come from a country that is known to you, but mm -hmm. their ancestors came from a completely different country, and that's where your blood is from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you yeah. have no idea. Mm -hmm. I studied my so genealogy back in 1986. <laughs> I, go back to, I used to go to Mike, Michael Fischi's. I had to go to libraries and all these churches mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, it's colorful. I mean, yeah. I'm Sicilian. I know I'm Sicilian because it's the grandparents. Yeah. But I got Prussia, Germany. Yep. Uh, I do have a grandmother that was born in um, Budapest, Hungary. Hmm. Wow. And I thought it was all Sicilian. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, hey, where this guy? Where she come from? So, you know. Like you said, yeah, genealogy is very interesting, and you do know you have to know where your culture is, yeah. and especially what we do to it. Sometimes it does help. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. You know, you know, knowing certain cultures, and when you go on investigation, you know what the questions to ask. Yes. You know what to do. It's not the same old question. Of, What's your name? <laughs> and stuff like. But you know, and then another language comes in. You can understand. Well, that's another language. That's German. That's this. Whatever. Because. You know, well, I grew up in Queens, Queens, yeah. New York. No. So I have, in Queens, New York was proven that we have every country in the world represented in Queens, New York. Yep. So, I mean, I, I was very multiple going to public schools and stuff like that, you know. I just have friends, you know. I don't know if I have I ever showed you the photo that I dug up. It's a photo of my grandfather. And then it's a photo of Chief Dragon Canoe, who would have been in the late 1700s. But I don't know if you can see the two here. If it's two, here we go. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Oh, my gosh, it looks oh, so wow. similar. Yeah. That's crazy, Porter. Isn't it, isn't it, though? So, like, I found that, and I was like, wow, that is, that's absolutely <laughs> nuts. Because I would have never known to look, you know. And then you see, I remember coming across that 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 drawing and i was like holy cow i know that face 
You know, it's grandpa. Think, yeah, it's grandpa. <laughs> Holy cow. Where did he go? I'm like, man, the genes are strong here. I didn't realize they were that strong. Grandpa's old. Holy <laughs> cow. <laughs> what he's like 200 years old? Pap's been around a while. <laughs> that's really awesome. spies around the earth. That's good. Mm. That's that's interesting when that happens, you know. It is, and 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 you see how how the gene pool passes through, and you see how mm-hmm. the similarities are, and it's and it's funny to see when I look back through family members, and and you put all of our pictures together, it's how similar that particular aspect mm-hmm. passed <coughs> down through time. No yeah, matter who is. they interacted with or who they had children with, yeah. there was an off there was some offspring that carried the same okay. similar uh, visual view Uh oh i have a picture of my great grandfather and it's like a black and white picture and he's standing with my great grandmother and he's just kind of you know digging up the front yard they're probably you know either burying somebody (laughs) (laughs) right probably the first thing um but i see him and he looks just like my cousin mark now yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, this is Mark. I sent Mark the picture and he goes, is that me? And I'm like, no. <laughs> right. And he goes, that's me. And I said, it's just uncan, like uncan <laughs> how yeah. you guys look so alike. And you're, and they're super, super tall. They have the same lean body, the same jawline, everything. Mm-hmm. And see that then you can see how it traces back to like my grandfather and then kind i mean like kind of like my dad but more like my aunt linda i mean she's not a male but (laughs) right right his like his mom and then him and i'm like this is amazing how crazy similar they all look if you if you know that genealogy and you do what we do and you investigate Mm -hmm. it makes you know you you can come up with things in certain locations that may resonate more with those entities and those spirits that might promote greater interaction and, mm-hmm. and, and more comfortable interactions. Yeah. So, but, you know, you and, know, and, you know <laughs> the questions and everything. It's, 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 I mean, I, I, since I got into the paranormal, I, I was never into like, um, you know, any, you know, history, Nothing. I, I thought history was going to school. I I, I feel <laughs> thrilled that history yeah. classes. Yeah. yeah. Then you get to go into these locations where three hundred year old buildings, mm-hmm. or more, and you go in there and like, wow, the history that's here. <coughs> wow, you know. And then and then you start looking up, and you know, I I'm a retired electrician, so I go in and look at structures. Also, they mm-hmm. go in and see how these buildings are built and everything, and the history and how they built it back then with just. With axes and hammers and you know you know the, the nails there wasn't like sometimes there wasn't even nails they would just you know dials and everything and oh yeah amazed and how the, everything is so or they used guys- flat nails back then the big flat nails like yeah. <clears throat> never think about that but they're starting to find that if you find a flat nail it's from a different time period mm-hmm. and that's how long ago it was mm-hmm. you know, well, yeah, it's it's interesting, and then you know, with the genealogy, then you know what you go into locations, and you, you know, you see how your family was raised and brought up, and you know, and then you go and you go into these locations, and you're like you know the questions, like I said before, you know the questions, the mm-hmm. head, the EVPs, the right stuff. Yeah, it does help. I, and then before I got into that, my all my um, when I got into the my my ghost hunting and stuff like that. I didn't care about any of that stuff. I got into my genealogy. I got into yeah. all this stuff afterwards. So, because I was very, it was interesting about that. I think it's so important for people, you know, you, you study history in school and you read about these places and these things that happened. But I think it's so important for students, children, or whoever yep. to go out and, and actually stand in these locations, <coughs> touch yeah. these buildings, touch mm-hmm. these locations, touch the piece of Plymouth Rock if you can find it. And, mm-hmm. And just yeah. to be there. I mean, I can remember the first time I held a document that was signed by George Washington. And, you know, you're in a dark room with a red light and you've got little white gloves on and everything's all dim. You know, it's, it's 
but I mean, to, to do something like that and you, th- and, and, and what it makes your mind go back to and think about and all of those things that you learned about in school suddenly become real. It's not just mm-hmm. a story in a book. These are real people. These are real things that happened and, and real adversity. And, uh, I, I think that one thing that the, that the paranormal does is it really brings that together for people. It makes it interesting. It brings it home. Mm-hmm. It connects it to them personally through their genealogy. And mm-hmm. you also have some pretty outstanding supernatural experiences that go along with it. Yeah. yeah. So you guys have anything coming up? Let's get into that. I soon, you know, Oh, you guys, you guys mm-hmm. have anything coming up? We're well, we're working on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always working on something. Yeah. Our entire lives. That's just wear t-shirts that say that we're working on it. Because one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that we love to do, we love to get access to locations that no one's ever had access to before. Yeah. We love to go in and help, help historical locations. Of course, raise money to keep those places open and help keep them maintained. Um, but we're always meeting with someone somewhere trying to <laughs> help. Yes. Uh, or trying to facilitate getting able or getting access to a location that is very intriguing. And right now we have two or three that we're really close to getting sorted out um, that are extremely important in the history of our nation. Uh, And, and we're in their final steps of getting access. So keep an eye out on our social media for, those two come out because they Mm -hmm. they will be they will be limited uh i am sure um and we've we actually have one that we've got we think we're going to get access to that we're going to have to investigate it but then we're going to have to either record it or stream it live because we Mm -hmm. can't have a lot of people in this location because it is so historically significant so Mm -hmm. i love dropping those teasers yeah, we're always working on something. And, of course, you can keep up on our social media because we post everything there. Um, we post to our Patreon first and then publicly, you know, a few days after that. But just we're doing our, our usual. We're always working, always trying to keep history alive. And um, we'll at least see you guys at the bash again, hopefully, in That's July. Year this year. Yeah, I'll be Why? There. I'm going on vacation again. <clears throat> with my kids how dare you <laughs> i know how dare you have a life outside the barn i know, I know. What's, what's going on but I, I would love to see you guys out someplace i'd love to go investigating with you anytime well hopefully we can we can figure out somewhere i know we're we always try to do something so yeah. i'm sure it'll I be you guys. we got some up over here the northeast Yep. What's is this like a gang sign for the Sicilian? So it was a gang. It's like, yep. <laughs> I'm in the Northeast, so I don't have to travel far. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you match. So yeah. yeah, yep. Um, and don't forget that Stephanie has the society, and she's also a Reiki master teacher. Oh my God, what don't you do, girl? Uh, she does public <laughs> investigations. She's a co-host of podcast Spooky South Coast. Um, she works with the historical societies. She does everything. And Porter, he's running the farm in Tennessee. <laughs> That's it. He's him. He's on all of shows, Forty episodes of shows. He's just I ridiculously good looking and bald. That's all. Yeah, that's. <sighs> Start a well, calendar. Get you through life. Why not? Hmm? Get you through life. Why not? Be good looking and bald. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you There's go. That's it. That. Good looking and bald. There's nothing wrong with that. Get you through life. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with See, that. Look at this. I'm not yeah. totally, but. You get it. I could be. I could be. <laughs> Bro, I will bring you a razor. Just embrace it. It'll all <laughs> It's all good. Join, join the club. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um,. Oh, what's his name? Ernie always says that to me. Come join the club. Join the club. Yeah. Just, yeah. Get, you know, just, get just this. take it off at this point. Yeah, I mean, it will set you free. <clears throat> there's there's no more windblown hair. There's no more bedhead. I mean, you know. You're so, <laughs> no more you're, 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 you're so close. <clears throat> just join us. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm close, but 
I don't know. I don't want to get up every day and have to shave my head. I'm lazy. I'm I barely shave. No. I'm retired. It tired. I'm, I'm, I'm just like you know. Well, mm. besides being bald, you have many talents. Um, he actually does a society with me. That's our Patreon page. Yeah. So, nice. Um, we post all of our secret adventures there and all of the uh, the the top secret squirrel information that we don't post publicly. And then sometimes we do <laughs> post publicly, but later. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, there. Go, go and join that. Go and yes. join that. I'm always doing <clears throat> something around here, farming, working on houses, or doing we something do, here. We do I, stuff. We just I wrote did, a book. I did normal stuff. We just wrote a book. Um, yeah. Well, I go. say we wrote a book. We put together a book that is really <laughs> cool because you it, it's it's an investigation book. So you get to it's it's one of those things where you can record certain aspects of the investigation that yeah. could be pertinent, like you know weather, temperature, who's there, location, experiments, try. It's got a place for notes. But one of the really cool things in the book that we added was we have our our little pet ghost. And he is studying about the living and it's all these little sayings that uh, kind of look back and, and kind of make us think as investigators like, well, that was something I probably shouldn't have said because, <laughs> because, because, because how little, he perceives us, how he perceives us <clears throat> is very intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> and so on each, yeah. in, in each investigation, I refer to him as Gregory. Um, but we don't we have we're not really sure if that's his name or not but that's just what he seems. i mean like at this me. point you just at this point he's just that, he's, so he's gregory the ghost um but on each investigation page that you have when you start a new one he's at the top and he's studying his books and he has an epiphany that's uh above him in his little bubble and it's um you know one of the great ones that i absolutely don't love ruin it okay I won't, I won't. <laughs> don't ruin it they're they're so they're so some of them are so twisted it's just amazing so yes. you have to get it and it's available on amazon and uh we'll yeah we have, have the link on. for that somewhere eventually yeah. publicly we're, this week we're, yeah so ghost notes ghost notes ghost notes nice ghost notes. it's very simple yeah i, like it. I mean I, I sometimes think about that if anything happens to us <clears> and we're on the other side <laughs> will we investigate the living that's right yeah can you yeah, I, I why not? not? Could be. Or we'll be the others. Yeah. yeah. The others. One of one of his little books that when you look at him and see him, one of his little books he's reading is is How to Scare a Human in Ten Days. Aww. Oh, that's good. I love it. M modern, modern haunting. Uh, <laughs> there, there's all kinds of good old things up there that he's reading. Okay. Um, do you know do you know you're dead and other silly things the living ask? <laughs> actually is funny yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It, we yeah. we tried to put our humor in there for sure yeah. but we wanted a place where people could just record what's happening because nobody ever remembers what happens on an investigation but getting back to the core of what investigating was when i entered it rather mm -hmm. than just um the half-baked paranormal investigating that people do now because they see a 30-minute tv show and they think that that's mm -hmm. all that goes into it so oh, yes. we wanted to be able to teach people like start from scratch. This is how you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask what their favorite song is, or <clears throat> you know what what dating was like back then, or yeah. whatever. So you always think outside the box when we're doing yeah. messages. Yep. And now that's one of our main things: think outside the box. And now so, we, um, so we have a lot more coming after that, but you know, we're yes. always busy. If you don't hear from us, we, we, we have our heads in a iPad somewhere working on something and trying to make magic happen. So just expect a lot of announcements coming soon. That's good because you guys are two of my favorite people. Well, thank oh, you. Well, thank you. Yeah. We're just a couple of weirdos. Oh, well, same. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and my husband said hello, by the way. Oh, oh well, tell him we said hi. Yes. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You can ask anybody. I'm the king of the weirdo, so. <laughs> there you Love go. So, yeah, well, hey, yeah, well, so we all fit in. <laughs> we all fit together. Guys, We're all good. So. Thank you so much for being here with us. I wish we had more time. I could talk to you forever. We'll just have yeah. to do it again. That's yeah. all. Yeah, you're welcome back anytime. We we didn't even get to all the questions, and I'm sorry, guys. I was yelled at for that by someone oh, no. else. Well, if you tell us where they are, I can try to go in and just answer them in a comment. Just You could just go to... Um, is it on the video page and okay. or a little witchy and or Anthony seekers of the uh, of the paranormal and 
everybody's questions are all there. I okay. think we got to, uh, why is the dark matter of the universe black? That was the next question. And mm. Goofy, so and funny, could you post a list of your random questions somewhere periodically <laughs> 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 while you're lying in bed? I do that all night too, so. Uh, I don't know if the world could handle that. Yeah, yeah. If, but we could if, we could probably start a series. If yeah. there was a zombie apocalypse, would sharks be zombies? Mm. I hope not. Mm. I have a thing about sharks. They're in the same category as aliens. <laughs> are, are octopi actually alien life forms? <coughs> they have to be. They squish into they squish into holes too small for them to fit through. Correct. So do cats though. <laughs> and mice. Mice. See, we could do this all. We're going to have to have a part two on this one. We got to. We got yeah. to. <laughs> what are X's? Yeah. X's? What are X's? What are X's? Like X wives, X. Absolutely oh. the same category as they <laughs> should. What category? Yeah. Yeah. They same category as aliens oh, and zombie yeah. sharks. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I can't complain. Mine's not that horrible, but. Yeah. <laughs> You could share mine then. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much. I don't want to keep you any later. You, you look exhausted, but thank you so much for being here. And we love you so much. Oh, and love you guys. We love you guys. Thank you very much. And we'll see you soon, hopefully. Anytime. We love you. And I'm sorry I'll miss you. It's my bit. Oh, you guys froze. Okay, here we go. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this was another Thursday night on Dimensions of the Supernatural. Catch us every Thursday, 7.30 to 9.30, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for being with us. Great. Thank you. And remember, be safe out there. You want to look for ghosts and not be a ghost. <laughs> Ciao, familiar. Forget about it. Hey.